What's up, everybody? Welcome in. It is another bonus episode of Back to the Beach with Kristen and Steven. I am, of course, Stephen Coletti. <laughs> I'm Kristen Cavallari. Hi. I'm a little, a little hungover and a little What's... tired today. So oh, yeah. if someone to the Post Malone concert last night, it was so good, by the way. One of my favorite concerts I've ever been to. But then I ended up on Broadway and Nashville, which is like that main strip <laughs> that really like you don't go to if you live here. But I was there. And I was there very late. So I am on the struggle bus today. So if I'm a little slow and I'm not making sense, that's why. <laughs> uh, all good. You know what? I remember when we were doing our shoot for this podcast and we were out in Nashville, we almost went to Broadway. It was discussed yeah. with Jason and with a few other people with our crew. But I did a drive by and I, I didn't know that Broadway was Broadway. Like it is, it is serious. <laughs> and uh, we, we yeah. ultimately were like, let's just go to a nice dinner. <laughs> which I, Yeah. My, my, <laughs> The sound Bro, of what you're saying of how you feel. Thing. Yeah. Yes. It was, um, it was, it was a right Sunday decision. night and it was packed. I mean, Broadway was Ooh. packed. So yeah, it was very fun, but I'm paying for it today for sure. But excited to do some voicemail episodes here. Let's do the damn thing. You know, 18 years ago, we would have gone to Broadway on that during that shoot, but not, not anymore. Not, we We've can't grown quite up. as much. A little bit. No, um, Exactly. All right, so here we are. We've got to uh, dig through some of the calls that you guys had for us. Uh, this is our last one of season one. So uh, are we um, are we getting ready to say goodbye to season one, Kristen? Thoughts? Yeah, which is crazy. I can't, it feels like it flew by. Um, Do you think- This has you'll... been one of the most enjoyable things I've ever done in my career, by the way. No, I have loved every second, really. Uh, I have enjoyed it as well. It's definitely exceeded expectations. And and uh, it's great to see that people that are listening, um, you know, your guys' feedback and and enjoyment of, of kind of going down memory lane with us has, has been really fun. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, lots of good stuff to come. But um, yeah, you know, I was thinking about this. I was like, after watching, after doing this, I'm more inclined to actually watch an episode uh, just kind of now that I know everything. It was kind of this, there was a bit of a fear of going back and opening that box. But now that I know what everything is and, and kind of unpacking it with everyone and talking to to everybody, it's, uh, yeah, you can have the fun of, of laughing at it. So I don't know. I think I, I I would be more interested in watching one a little bit further down the line here. Uh, what about yourself? Well, it's funny you... because now I want to go and watch The Hills too. <laughs> now I'm like, okay, I can do that. Because oh, I have really? not seen The Hills. I don't know if I've ever, ever seen The Hills at all. Like even when it came out, I may not have watched it yeah. um, because to me it was so different then at that point it was just a job, but mm -hmm. I feel like now I could go and watch it and just laugh at it. So I don't know. Oh, that would be very interesting to see. Um, I actually want to go and watch Very Cavallari. <laughs> oh, be. okay. There you go. So even though it was only, you know, four years ago or whatever, but I just kind of want to see the dynamics on there a little bit, but I'll how probably not that do show that. did you do? I did three seasons of it. I don't remember how many episodes, but mm, you know, okay. for three years, two and a half, three years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, this episode here is coming um, right after doing, or after, of course, you guys listening to uh, Liz Gately, the creator of Laguna Beach. Um, and he also was a fan of the podcast, but it was truly awesome to have her on. Um, you know, she was, she was great. She came in, you know, so well prepared. Uh, she listened to the podcast and she watched the show again for us. And yeah. uh, it was, it was pretty special to be able to, you know, get her perspective and, and, you know, really learn about how that first idea popped in her head and it evolved into being Laguna Beach and uh, listening to her talk about it from her side was, was really cool. Yeah, I agree. I loved having her on and something that she forgot to mention was that she loves the final scene of you and I, where you talked about, which I've actually talked about too, where you wanted to take a photo of my eyes really close to look at. <laughs> um, she said that was another example of how poetic you were off the cuff. And I've, you know, obviously I agree because I've said that before too, that that was truly one of the sweetest things anyone has ever said to me, especially for being 18 years old. So uh, she loved that too. That was, that was sweet of Liz to say that. So th thank you, Liz. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, happy to be an open book for you guys over here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as we were at, at 18 years old. Um, no kidding. All right, right, right well, let's, yeah. You ready over there? Getting into some voice good? Smells? Yeah. Get yeah. Hydrated? I know, I'm trying. Something Nothing's going to help there. me. I need the day to be over, and then I just need to go to sleep tonight. <laughs> I'll be great, great question. <laughs> if you have a little bit of a hangover, what's your go-to cure? <clears throat> I mean, I've had so many electrolytes today. <clears throat> yeah, um, electrolytes are key. What about food-wise? Where, where would you go there? 
I, so I can go one of two ways when I'm hungover. I either want like something, this is going to sound so crazy to people, like a really yummy salad or like fruit because it's so hydrating or I want like mm. burger and fries, but I know that's going to actually make me feel worse in the long run. Salad is actually smart. I've never thought of that because I've definitely had no desire to eat a salad when I'm hungover. but it the, helps. I'm the telling refreshing, you. It, yeah. And maybe some fruit yeah. citrus in there. Uh, but I usually this go This morning fun. I had- I probably had 10 pieces of bacon when I was making it for Jackson. Mm. I was just eating it as I was making it too. So good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I usually go pho. I feel like pho is really all the broth in there is something that you actually kind of come out feeling, okay, we are going to live to see tonight. I love that. Mm -hmm. That sounds really good right now, actually. I was just trying to order some food delivered to my house, but there's, the options are limited here. You are, you are out there far in, out the in the country. Yeah, you got so to gotta kill it and cook it yourself. <laughs> well, let's jump in. Voicemails. We are here. We have a task at hand. We can't just sit here yes. and just um, about my hangover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's jump right in. Let's start with the first one. Hi, Stephen and Kristen. This is Alex from Virginia, and my question mm. is: When the episodes aired, did y'all get in contact with each other? You know, to to straighten things out, like either just you and Kristen or <laughs> other cast members. Um, uh, and what were the absolutely. Um, enjoying the podcast. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh man. Do you great question over there, Alex from Virginia. And thank you for calling in. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. Fuck. Like it was, do you uh, remember the first episode? I, do I feel like we you, had, we had a call that I don't remember I was the call, but hysterical. I remember. Yeah. You were, I was, you were like, so what upset. the fuck? Yeah. Did you come over and I wouldn't come out of the bathroom or did I make that up? I, I don't remember that. Is there, I know that maybe there was... it was just my mom. My mom came over and I was like, my mom happened to be in town when the first episode aired or when we oh, saw it okay. anyways. And I remember just like locking myself in my bathroom and I would not talk to anybody. I was so upset. Yeah. I remember, I remember that. I rem and I remember there was concern with your dad as well. I felt like you were just concerned about kind of how the, how you're being portrayed in a way, but then also like mm -hmm. the way our relationship was like, oh, here's this like two relationships happening at the exact same time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I needed just, you to clear the air. <laughs> yeah, and well, I guess what was it for you? Was it specifically me and our relationship or was it also a portion of how you were being portrayed? What was yeah, that it was shot? both. I mean, I was, I was really upset about how it was portrayed, but I think also like between you and I, I was like, have you been lying to me? Like what has been going on? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. believed I, what I saw, you know? <laughs> that's right. I had to, I had to clear up uh, leaving a trace house. And that was like, they, they cut that oh, all yeah. together to make it seem like Lauren and I were leaving together. And we're going to go hang out back at our house. Like that's yeah. not yeah. what happened. Um, yeah. And there was a lot that we needed to clear up. Yeah, there was a lot. And I think there was actually, Dieter even called me sometimes and apologized for not maybe understanding how a wild line might be used. Um, oh, for, wow. uh, I remember talking about the bet. Remember that this, this, they were really trying to push, or at least you could tell in the dialogue at the golf course, this bet of like whether or not, I think Lauren and I were going to hook up in Cabo. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, and you could tell it's just, it's, you know, we're trying not to, to take this bet and, and play along with it, but it was something that, you know, I remember a couple of those moments where Dieter was like, I, I had to say that to them or, you know, something like that. So there was definitely a lot of clearing up and 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 conversations mm -hmm. that happened. But that first one, you know, I wish I remembered more about it, but I, I do specifically, you know, have a memory of, of you being very upset from that first episode for many reasons. And I think we all were. We were really adjusting to like truly what the show was going to be. And after talking to Liz, like they had to set so much up in those first two episodes or first couple episodes that they really had to lean into it all and really use that editing. And so for us, we were like, whoa, like, fuck, yeah. you know, and as we've gotten to the end of the season here, we've, we've start to see a little more of these moments that are more real. We're kind of mm -hmm. more, a little more comfortable in front of the camera and things are settling into like, oh, these are the last days of these kids enjoying high school. So, yeah, I mean, it, it um, you know, it definitely tapered off toward the end there as far as the phone calls, but in the beginning, the, the shock value <laughs> was as big as it gets. Yeah. So, all right, moving <laughs> on. Next question. The next voice. Hi, now. Kristen and Steven. This is Kristen from the wonderful state of Delaware. I like you guys when I was in college. I'm 47 years old, dog mom of two, and I'm dying to know if you have heard from anybody from MTV or production about all the tea you're spilling, and have you heard any feedback <laughs> and any negativity about all the behind scenes stuff that you're spilling? Love the show. <laughs> no, look, we've... Um... 
obviously being able to talk to Liz this last week was great. And we were able to you know talk to her about some things and her to share her perspective of obviously needing to create a TV show um, and doing their job and doing it masterful, masterfully. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, I, I, we have, you know, a dialogue with MTV and, um, you know, I think that they're, they've always been supportive of us over the years, but yeah, I, I think that they've, we've, we've got a, a good relationship with them. Um, some of the producers don't want to come in. We've tried to get so many producers on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that they haven't wanted to, or they've kind of had us go on a run around, but I thought Liz was the best one to get. So I'm glad it, I think it really worked out, but I haven't gotten or heard of any negativity or heard any producers being upset about it. I mean, maybe Adam DeVello is, and that's why he didn't come on, but I don't know. I yeah. haven't heard anything. I, I think at the end of the day, um, look, we, you know, we, we are respectful to MTV for obviously, you know, the opportunity that they handed us and, and the experience. And as you've heard with everybody, everyone will go and do the show again. Uh, but also look, I'm sure a few of you are watching the show again and, did a few of you happen yeah. to get a Paramount Plus subscription recently to watch that show? Yeah, that's so true. Um, you know, it's <laughs> it's it's publicity for their show. You know, and and people are going to look at yeah. uh, go go and find it and um, and watch it. So I'm sure that there are some numbers being bumped there at Paramount Plus, uh, which is a benefit for them. So it's all good. And good I think that yeah, again, they like to see that you know we're doing well, and and this is a a um, ultimately a very positive experience for everybody. It's cathartic to go back and and kind of hash this stuff out with everyone. So um, they're, they're supportive. Absolutely. <laughs> hey, Kristen and Steven, this is Sam from Houston. Um, so Kristen, I just wanted to let you know that you, your hair was like hair goals for me as a freshman in <laughs> high school watching this show. Um, and I had the frizziest hair and your hair always looked perfect. Even when you had it in the messy bun, it looked the texture was great. It was like always perfect. Mm -hmm. But I remember at the time the hair products that were available weren't that great. Like things were just starting to come yeah. out and like heat tool hot tools were getting better. So I wanted to know like what was your hair routine at the time and how has it evolved oh, over the years? Okay. Thanks. <laughs> uh well, first of all, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's very sweet. Um I could not tell you what my routine was back then. I feel like it was always straight. So I had to have straightened it because my hair is naturally wavy. And I feel like actually that was when like straighteners first came out. So everyone's hair was just straight all the time. I'm pretty sure that's all I did. Um, now my hair is actually, it's really important to me. So that's a huge compliment. Um, I try not to actually style it that much so that it stays really healthy. This is actually kind of from last night. Um, and I just kind of like zhuzh it up with some, um, texturizing spray and some, um, <laughs> I can't think dry shampoo. <laughs> Can I phone a friend? Yeah. Um, and do, do so we have I... a dry shampoo sponsoring the podcast, a hair product? We do. I actually, I use living proof. I can't make this up. I swear to God, there I use go. their, their dry shampoo. Um, I actually really, really like it, but I try to only wash my hair a couple times a week. Dry shampoo is my best friend and I just try not to style it. Um, people are always asking me how I get these waves. So you can do one of two things. This is on video, right? Like people can actually see me doing this. <laughs> We're not just recording for fun. <laughs> so you can either take a straightener and you can like wrap it around the straightener and like pull it as you go. I need an actual straightener to do it. But, or, uh, yeah, Steven, you can take notes. Or with a curling iron, you just take it and you like wrap it around and then you like pull it out. <laughs> there you go like that there you go and then it's yeah. curly. perfect cool then it's curly yeah um so that's kind of that's my routine i hope that helps i don't know if you guys have like specific questions maybe i'll do a q a on instagram about hair stuff because i just i don't know i could go into it all day but i don't know how much this audience actually wants to know about my hair <laughs> well before living proof i was just rinsing my hair yeah I, was, yeah I don't think guys should be shampooing their hair my kids never do do you know that, um, so if you stop shampooing your hair, there is a period where you have to adjust where your hair will probably be pretty oily and it's like kind of nasty. But once your hair, like the pH settles and balances out, you actually don't need to shampoo your hair at all. Like I'm not, mm. my boys literally probably haven't sh shampooed their hair in like two years and it's great. It's great. I, <laughs> I can count on two hands how many times I've washed my hair with shampoo See? in the last yeah. five years. See, 
<laughs> God, that's also such bullshit. Like the amount of stuff that girls uh, have I know. to do. It's you really guys, I do, yeah. <laughs> Do not envy Like, that. how nice would it be just to wake up and just put a little gel in your hair and go? I really envy that about guys. Really do. <laughs> but then you don't, you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> or last night, like me on Broadway, whipping my hair around. You can't do that. <laughs> no zhuzhing. Um, <laughs> whipping your hair around on Broadway. That's amazing. <laughs> I need some grainy security camera footage of that from uh, <laughs> one of the bars. <laughs> Did you get up on the bar? No, thank God. Uh, I've learned my lesson. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that uh, for that voicemail, yes. Sam. Hi, Kristen and Steven. This is Kayla. I'm from Reno, Nevada. I graduated at the same time as you guys and was addicted from the, to the show from the beginning. I have to say, even still to this day, some of the questionable fashion I am very much inclined to, <laughs> and I miss. I have a huge question for Steven. It. I was a big One Tree Hill head, so seeing you up here on the screen was a very exciting thing for me, <laughs> especially being a love interest of my favorite character, Brooke Davis. But I'm curious, mm -hmm. because if I do the timeline right, were you already interviewing or auditioning, so to speak, for this show before Laguna Beach was over? So would that be around season mm -hmm. two when it was happening? Or how did it come to play that you even got the opportunity to be a character that eventually becomes kind of big towards the end. All right, thank you. Love you guys so much. Bye. Um, well, thank you, Kayla from Reno. Appreciate that. Um, I, yeah, so timeline-wise, jumped into um, One Tree Hill, but in the middle of season four, uh, I was cast in, I believe, October of 2006. So oh, I wow. you know, went to college through uh, you know, the spring of 2005 was down in LA for the fall. Uh, and then just jumped into, you know, acting classes and was studying for a while. Didn't really want to audition too much, uh, cause I still had a lot to learn. Uh, and then that summer I had an audition for One Tree Hill. It went really well, went in a few times, but then ultimately they said that they were going a different direction, but that they would be back. Uh, and then a couple months later, they came back for the, with that role. Wow. So I went out there October, November of, of 06. I think the episode aired in 2007. So I had been about a year removed from Laguna, even season two. Season two might've been airing, I think in the early part of 2006. Um, but yeah, it wasn't until the end of 2006 when I jumped on One Tree Hill. So, and I, I think I've mentioned this in an episode, but there was a little line about Laguna Beach in my very first episode. <laughs> one of the characters was talking about it. And then of course we did play into it at one point, much later in the show, when somebody in One Tree Hill when someone's talking to my character and they're asking about that kid from Laguna Beach and my character says, no, that was some other tool. <laughs> oh, how funny. <laughs> Which That's was great. great. Yeah. I love so that. a little, little bit of a connection there, but yeah. Um, mm. I actually, you know, I, I worked on a movie with Hillary Burton who uh, of course was on One Tree Hill and she would talk to me about One Tree Hill working on the show. And I was like, ah, that sounds like an awesome show to work on. Sure enough, as soon as I did those first couple episodes, uh, I fell in love with with the state and with the cast and crew in North Carolina. Just, um, you know, it was really great to hang out there. So I wanted to come back and and they brought me back, which was great. So we had a lot of fun working on that show. So Next cool. One. Hi, Kristen and Steven. Uh, this is Stephanie from Austin, Texas. Um, I had a question for each of you. Uh, number one, Kristen, I had a question uh, regarding your guest starring uh, on Veronica Mars. I just wondered what was your experience like, if you have any memories uh, from one of my all-time favorite shows. And then um, my second question is for Steven. Um, what was the process with um, The Hills? You made sort of a one episode guest appearance, mm. and I just wondered how that came into fruition. What was um, your experience like coming back to reality and uh, seeing Lauren um, on camera? Um, <clears throat> thanks, guys. Love it. Uh, love the show. Uh, have a good day. Bye. <laughs> you have so a good cute. day too. How many episodes yeah. of Veronica Mars did you do? Did you just one? Oh, they okay. probably were like, "This role is so bad." It was my first acting role that I ever had, and I was so nervous. What and actually, so I played, I played a lesbian cheerleader. Thank you very much. 
And awesome. I don't know if this was going around TikTok recently or something, but I had all of my friends sending me this one scene in the bathroom where I tell Veronica Mars that I'm a lesbian and that I'm being blackmailed. And I was like, I was, it was so cringeworthy. I look like a baby, but I just, I was so nervous because it was my first acting role. So, um, but I, you know, I had a good time, but it was just when you're new to that whole world and especially coming from reality TV, I just, you know, I just wanted to be super professional and just do the right thing. And I wanted to get in and out as quickly as possible, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like on, on wanting to be professional and kind of coming from reality TV, it was, you know, back then. And I mean, there still is, there's just kind of this, this stigma of like, all right, you know, the people that do reality TV, right. It's kind of like, it's looked down upon in a way. It's, and, and never mm-hmm. mind the fact that like people are, you know, are entrepreneurial and, 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 and creating, you know, clothing lines or, or whatever products like they're, I mean, they're business people. I, I see it. And, and I respect the work at work ethic that it does take to be successful in, in such a way. You can't just pop on a reality TV show and then all of a sudden you're going to make millions off Instagram. It doesn't right. happen that way. I mean, for, your, right. for yourself, like you've done, you've come a long way and all the things and, and ventures that you've worked on to you know, be where you're at today. And so you know, I just walking on the set is uncomfortable. That was, there was this, you know, people, it just was looked out upon. And so you, and you go on to, in the last place, I, I feel like you'd, you'd want to be is, is, you know, on a scripted set. Um, you know, it mm-hmm. felt like there wasn't enough back then there wasn't going to be enough room for both of them to exist, but of course now there is. So I felt that when I first was, was going on Montreal, at least internally, I, I was nervous about that, but then I got there and thankfully everyone was, was really open and, and warm and welcoming. Um, which was... you know it too when you go on a tv show that's been in production for a while they're like a family you know they know each other really well so you're the new kid coming in also which is also nerve-wracking so to be to have a guest appearance on a show I think is it's a little nerve-wracking even after years when I had been acting for a while and I still it, it was always just like a little uncomfortable because you don't you're the new kid you don't know anybody I will say yeah. this though Kristen Bell is one of the nicest people she was so sweet to me and I saw her a million other times after that at, you know, like movie awards and stuff like that. And she was always so, so kind. And that always meant the world to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's important to note when people like that really kind of like take you under their wing and are really good to you because not everyone is like that. So she's a really good, a good egg, which I want to point out. A hundred percent. It divided people, in, or not divided, but there was, like you're saying, you could really get an idea of somebody's character and the way that they... Um, you know, how they were accepting to you of that situation. Because mm-hmm. look, I could understand from the other side. If I was, you know, come all this this way to be on a scripted TV show. And then this person that was on this reality TV show that was really hot right now that the show wanted to pop in for a couple of scenes. It's kind of like, it, it, would, it could rub you the wrong way, naturally. But mm-hmm. to still be welcoming. Um, yeah, you, you could see that. Because there were some people that were very judgmental in, in the beginning. I do remember that. And it was it was yeah. not fun. Um but yeah, and then uh, for the, so- What about the right, hills? The hills of it all, this is an interesting story. It was um, something that was mulled over for a while. Uh, I talked to Adam DeVello about it many times and and of course mm. talked to Lauren about it um, and it got her feelings. So, you know, with every, every season of the hills, they would come to me and, and see if I would want to do it. Uh, and I just, you know, I was, I was, I had had enough after that first season of Laguna. Contractually, we had to do season two and you can see we kind of, of course it kind of peters off for us but yeah i was like i'm I, i'm you know i'm uncomfortable with this i i can't do which kristen what you were able to do is, is fully play ball and and yeah. embrace it which i i respect you for doing uh i just yeah moving in a different direction and so but they kept coming back and, and i was you know so interested in doing scripted stuff where they wind up pairing an episode of the hills like if you come on the hills we'll do a scripted development deal with you at MTV. And this was around the time where they were developing uh, Teen Wolf and Awkward. It's like 2010, 2011. MTV was kind of upping its slate a little bit with scripted TV as well. And so I was, of course, was really interested in doing that. And uh, it was a perfect situation, one episode in and out, and then this scripted development deal. Now, again, the naivety, like uh, <laughs> they they did not did care you get about that, developing. Did you get that deal? Yeah, yeah I got the deal. But did, did they develop anything with me scripted? Yeah. Absolutely not. Which if, if I yeah. was running that network, I would not put one of my reality stars on one of their scripted shows. So yeah, but you know, we, we brought a lot of things to them and tried to make it work. I uh, tried to, you know, I 
paired up with different writers and directors and, and would pitch them projects, but uh, none Aww. of them went anywhere. <laughs> uh, could have used like a little guest star maybe on one of your scripted shows. Yeah, too, but it's a, but we, we, wound up, <laughs> we wound up doing the one episode and, um, you know, even that day was, was a big day for me. I remember uh, going up into the, I think it's at Lauren's house. There's a party and um, I went up into their kind of command room, if you will, where there's a bunch of TVs and our monitors, if you will, and, and the, all the cameras that are running at this party because there's a lot of people there. And Adam Develo just kind of talked me through like, you know, what he was thinking and, and you know, how, you know, I was going to, you know, walk on to the, into the party and, and talk to Lauren and kind of set up our little date. And um, yeah, I was incredibly nervous and very uncomfortable, um, <laughs> but yeah. we just went for it and it wasn't so bad and, and we moved on. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it took a while to get to that point. Um, and, you know, I, I do give it up to MTV for being very, um, you know, crafty and saying, all right, let's just, all right, we'll just, we'll have them in for one episode and we'll, we'll call this a development deal on the scripted side. Yeah. So all good. I'm going to go watch that episode there. too. I'll watch that when I go watch all my Hell's episodes. <laughs> There's a line from that. I think I say something to Lauren about her being precious cargo. And I've had friends uh, yeah. remind me of that often. Precious cargo. I like that. <laughs> hey, Kristen and Steven. Uh, my name is Jill. I live in Phoenix, uh, Arizona. So in 2006, I moved to South Orange County and I was so excited because the second season of Laguna Beach had just ended and you guys were my age. Um, I graduated in 2005. So it was really exciting. Um, I have wondered for years whether any of you Laguna folks went down to Capo Beach or San Clemente. And if so, what were some of your favorite beaches or restaurants? Um, I know on the show there was pretty much just Pomodoro shown. And I've always wondered if you guys went to any places in San Clemente since it's so close to Laguna. Um, anyway, love you guys. Thank you. Kristen. Um, I think I only went to San Clemente one time to a sushi restaurant. I met a friend from the first high school that I went to, Santa Margarita. Um, but that was the only time I remember going down there. Mm -hmm. Did Just you surf down there a lot? Well, we we did. The, just before Capistrano Beach is where Doheny Beach is. And that first okay. surf scene with you and I on the water. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Is yes. From Doheny. Um, okay. But yeah, oh, yeah. I, spent, I spent a lot of time down there. My I've got family down there. I... My, my cousins and my aunt and uncle live right near Capistrano Beach. My grandparents lived in Capistrano Beach off of uh, Camino de Estrella. They're off oh my five. gosh, you have such a good memory. It's amazing to me <laughs> that you so, know, like even the street names. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I've been down there a lot. Um, restaurant wise, this is a we're getting a little into Dana Point, but kind of on the border there of Capistrano Beach, Las Galandrinas. I've loved those enchiladas since I was a child. Actually, my parents lived, we lived in San Juan Capistrano, which is right there at, at Capistrano Beach and Dana Point, just south of Laguna. And then eventually we moved oh. into Laguna, but there was a Mexican joint mom and pop shop kind of hole in the wall called Las Galandrinas. And every birthday from about, oof, like since I was like 13, uh, up until well into my twenties, if I was coming home for a little family dinner for my birthday, my mom would get Las Galandrinas enchiladas. And then there's also another Mexican joint that's not sure if it's still there, but it's, it was on the beach there called Alamendi's, which was also, oh, there was one in yeah. Laguna. Do you remember going to that oh, one? Oh, okay. Yes, yes. That one is no longer there. So we can say they were wonderfully loose with uh, our fake IDs. Uh, <laughs> 17, yes! 18 years oh old. God, yes! Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes! Some yes. of our first margaritas you know in a working establishment was at All Mendes in Laguna, which is no longer there. But yeah, there is another one down at Capistrano Beach. Um, also, I just thought of the Del Taco that's over there. I used to go to that pretty often. <laughs> right? Am I thinking of the right, yeah, yeah. the right area? That's I'm more pretty, down data yes. point, but that is yeah, is South data point. Okay. All yeah. right. Well, I was I was with that Del Taco more than I would like to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for that, Jill. We'll jump to hey you guys. Uh, it's Brittany from Canada. Uh, Kristen, this question is for you. Um, I was just wondering, how do you deal with watching people like criticize the heck out of you? <laughs> And then how do you handle yourself after um, hearing such, uh, you know, negative comments made towards yourself? 
But um, yeah, just wanted to just wanted to leave that voicemail. Love you guys. Uh, I'm really enjoying the podcast as well. Bye. Gosh, I wish I was in a better mental state right now to answer this question. Um, I have dealt with negativity and people coming after me since I was 17, you know, since Laguna Beach aired. So I think I've just developed thick skin. The, I also, as I've gotten older, I've realized if someone's trying to tear me down, it really isn't about me. It's more about that person and their unhappiness or whatever it is. So I find a lot of comfort in that. Um, but what was I just going to say? I just totally lost my train of thought. I, I hear um, you with that, though, as far as coming a long way with that and, and understanding that a lot often it is the individual dealing with their own stuff and kind of projecting and just, you know, the, the, when there, somebody's quick to judge and kind of call you out, um, especially when, you, when you're older, it's, I don't know, there, there's stuff yeah. that they need to work through, I think, on their own, as opposed to much more about maybe what you're doing. Um, yeah, exactly. Exactly. The one thing that actually like still to this day really makes me mad though, is when something is just so inaccurate, which happens a lot. Mm -hmm. And I need to get better at just being like, whatever, it's a stupid article or whatever, and just let it go. To this day, I have never read an article, not one article that has been 100% correct, not one. So I just think that that's important to keep in mind. Um, you know, nothing you guys are seeing or hearing is true. Um, usually there's a little seed of truth to it, but not always. And so <clears throat> like my personality, I would love to just come out and just be like, this is what really happened in this situation. And this didn't go down. Like, I would love to just do that. But all that does is add fuel to the fire and gives certain people a bigger platform and makes the story bigger. So I've learned over the years to just shut my mouth. If I really want something to go away, I just, I don't talk about it and it does go away. But that's the part that just pisses me off is like people judging me for something they really have no idea about. No idea. So I don't know how to get, I don't know how to get better at that. Don't, I don't read my Instagram comments. I, my friends will be like, I don't know if you want me to tell you this or not. Cause I really, I don't pay attention to like the tabloidy stuff. Sometimes I catch wind of stuff, but for the most part, I really kind of like try to tune it all out. Yeah. And you were built for it. I feel like, you know, this is not your choice, but I mean, you moved around, like you were saying, quite a bit early on. And I think being dropped into different schools at different ages, that is yeah, that is tough, you know? Yeah. And, you know, you're a beautiful girl and, and it's threatening to other people that are established in their cliques, you know, and, and are worried about, you know, if their friends are going to abandon them in a way. And so people, I feel like, have gone after you. You've always dealt with that. I remember you, you said yeah. you were in high school. <clears throat> Yeah, I've dealt with shit like that my pretty much my whole life or since like middle school. And so, yeah, the show just obviously magnified it. You know, now it's on a much larger scale, but in a way it was kind of nothing new. Like I always dealt with like rumors in high school and stuff like that, people talking about me. So, it's so weird the reactions that, that people have, what they feel that they need to do. I, I think I mentioned this before, multiple occasions, people would just want to kick my ass because I was on that TV show. Like, so we had similar. to leave parties because I could hear people, you know, standing three, four people away going like, should we kick his ass? Well, should we, should we, should you know we what that is up? though? Yeah, but that's because they're threatened by you. That's all insecurity. You can but do that now, like, right? To go to that, like, I, I don't know. I, I just said, just, I'm built different. But to think that like, oh, this is the guy from that TV show. And yeah, whatever. It's a reality TV show. And, and this is 2005. So people were like, you know, who the fuck are these people? Like, this is, this is so stupid. Um, yeah, they probably and, thought you were going to get all the girls. You were going to take all the girls away. <laughs> <laughs> girls would want to take some pictures. So I, I think maybe that. Yeah, that, that's what that's that, about. Is because they were threatened <laughs> by you. <laughs> but the idea is just like, like, I guess that's just dudes at that the age. Kids, like, let's, kids. The thing that we should do is yeah. is kick his ass. Like, we I don't should know. beat him up. That will solve all the problems. <laughs> so silly. All right, next question. Hi, my name is Julie and I'm from Chicago. Um, I just had a quick question. What was your guys' thoughts about Laguna Beach season three? Did you guys watch it? I feel like it was a flop and I just wanted to know what your thoughts were. Um, thank you. All right, bye. Did you watch it at all? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think no, I watched I it No, I didn't. Either. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you. Um, 18 year old me did not want it to do well. So I was happy when it bombed, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's my completely you. honest <laughs> answer. <laughs> that competitive fire in you though is, is strong. It's, it's still there. I feel like, yeah, oh, yeah. we're like, no, you know what? 
our season's going to be the best season. And I, I do appreciate mm-hmm. that honesty. I just wasn't, yeah, again, uh, I'm just a little shell shocked from even the first season. I, mean, I, I stopped watching it in the middle of season two. I mean, as we get oh, yeah. to season two <laughs> of this podcast, I'm going to be watching episodes for the first time and and with mm-hmm. stuff that I, that I was in. So I, I'm very interested to see that. But yeah, it's just reality TV is not my thing. Just didn't want to watch it. Um, but yeah. you know, there's, I know some of the kids on there, all, all nice kids. And so I know they took it from there up to Newport. I don't know how many seasons they did there. Oh, it's hard to recreate a show too. Cause essentially at that point, it's like, it's a whole new cast. I don't know. I think it's hard for people to buy into a whole new cast. Yes, that's, that's true. You're right. So do basically the, essentially the same idea and yeah. some of those storylines, like let's try to find the next love triangle. Let's try to find these next characters, our next Trey, our next Christina, our next Morgan. Yeah. And when it's not the characters that you enjoyed watching the first season, first couple seasons, then it's, yeah, it's really hard for your audience to follow along. Mm-hmm. They're just going to be missing those people the whole time. So mm-hmm. uh, I can, I can understand why it, it, it didn't work out. Yeah. Me too. All right. Well, fun. Good questions <laughs> as fun. always. Yeah. Those were some good questions. Thank you guys. Uh, it's nice yeah. to, you know, to kind of do these bonus episodes, um, you know, on, on camera, of course, for you guys as well. And, and to hear your thoughts. So we appreciate it. Uh, it's fun to do those. And, and that is a wrap on our bonus voicemail episodes for season one. Yeah. Uh, thanks you guys for submitting all of your questions over this season. It's been a lot of fun to hear mm-hmm. what you guys want to know. Fear not though. Well, we will do some more when we get into season two. So as, as some episodes come out, if you've got some questions, uh, of course, you know, give the voicemail number a call and we'll try to get them answered for you. But as yeah. far as where we are here with season one, we have got the final episode of season one of Laguna Beach, the Orange County coming for you next week. What's the name Dunzo. of that episode, Kristen? Dunzo, <laughs> <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> it's on a t-shirt now, too, you guys. You guys, you guys haven't checked out the merch. We got some uh, BTTB t-shirts and some gnarly hats. And we, of course, have a Dunzo t-shirt, which is pretty great. And it's got Kristen's Zuzu Trooper on there, too. So you have to check those out. But, uh, yeah, we've got our final episode. And then after that, we have a very, very special wrap episode of the whole season a little recap with a special guest so you're gonna yes, want to tune in you guys that. are not gonna want to miss that one trust us all right guys we'll talk to you soon